The author of this video being reviewed is WEBM on September 5th, 2022. Today's video starts with an outside fire that has extended into a single family dwelling. Part of the reason I'm reviewing these types of videos is seeing this type of activity. This video is a prime example of what our profession is devolving into. It must be acknowledged and answered for. I know that the incoming companies can see the smoke from this fire at least a mile away. So it is inexcusable for a responding engine company not to stop at the closest fire hydrant and secure a supply line, lay a line into the incident. Whether it is a three or four person engine company, without a continuous source of water, the engine operations will cease. The engineer stops the apparatus, exits the vehicle, half of his turnout gear on, safety must be your first consideration, dumps his tank and sets his radio channel. He moves to the rear of the apparatus and watches the firefighter proceed to drop his holes in a large pile of spaghetti slash holes on the ground and doesn't say anything or correct him and he proceeds to load the line making a huge mess of the firefighting line. The firefighter should have flaked out the holes. Not to mention where is the captain? It should have taken no more than 15-20 seconds to give a complete size up of the incident and get off the rig and go to work. Now, here is one of my biggest pet peeves. Why does this firefighter drop down to his knees to put on his gloves? It doesn't make sense. He turns on his breathing apparatus and doesn't suit up. It's a waste of time. The engineer makes a half effort at straightening out the holes and walks away. Sees that there are too many kinks in the line for a good flow of water and his conscience forces him to fix the situation. The captain shows up, halfway suited up, coat open, no breather. If the leadership is going to violate basic safety procedures, what can be expected of the subordinates? They begin to advance the firefighting line. I'm really shocked that the captain did not survey the area and at least check the interior of the house for extension. As the incident developed, I am shocked once again to see that the engineer does not secure a supply line to help guard the safety of his engine company that is operating in the IDLH. That is the immediate dangerous to life and health. That is inexcusable. You can look at the smoke coming from the single family dwelling and tell it is compromised. It is involved with fire. It is almost seven minutes in on this incident before the captain makes entry into the single family dwelling. A civilian comes up to the engineer and tells him he will help him hand lay a supply line to the hydra. And the engineer tells him, no, he's got a fire engine coming for that at 7 minutes and 30 seconds into the incident. It is inconceivable to me that they would not bring water to a fire of this magnitude and then have the audacity to want to wait for someone to show up and do the job you should have done or can do. This video is truly an exercise in what not to do as an emergency service first responder. You never wait in this situation, for someone who is coming, they may never get there. We must do better.